Happy Tuesday, folks. All right. So just to follow up from my previous uh, videos, something very funny happened. Um, <clears throat> I was doing maintenance uh, yesterday evening, and uh, I looked down, <clears throat> and uh, right here in the, uh, when I opened that cabinet right there on my fish tank, the hatchet fish, uh, remember how I talked about, you know, don't scoop him up with a net? My guess is during maintenance, he jumped out. Uh, anyway, he was uh, he was there on the bottom of the, uh, the tank uh, cabinet, and uh, he was uh, stone dry, stiff as a board. So, anyway, so I hatchet fish gone. That was kind of a bummer. Uh, and I'm not going to put any more hatchet fish in this tank uh, just because they like to hang out at the top and I've got the lily pads and so much going on in the 120 there's just no room um, something else uh, noteworthy is uh, I lost one of the neons and it looks kind of heavy and it's just me but um, I went with a lesser grade uh, blood worm and uh, I'm not going to get that brand anymore I think the Hikari uh, blood worm is the way to go. If you're going to do frozen blood worms, that's just me. Um, and that's not the first fish I've lost to a lower quality blood worm, in my opinion. I don't know. But maybe I'm overfeeding. Maybe I just need to cut back. But what I wanted to do, and uh, my kids are doing something in the other room. They're just being really, really loud. But what I wanted to show you guys, PetSmart has new fish now. And I went by there for a bottle of Prime today. I ran out of Prime. And for those of you that are serious in the hobby, um, I'm going to go online. This is what I'd recommend you to do if you have a lot of tanks. Uh, I'm sure Dustin does this. But they, they sell it almost like a two-liter bottle of Prime. And that's really the way to buy it. It's just so much cheaper that way. Uh, instead of, you know, paying five or six bucks for the little, you know, small shampoo size bottle. But what I wanted to say... Went to PetSmart today, and they had uh, two of the cutest little, they had a tank full of German Blue Rams, and if you guys remember, the 33 gallon, this tank was originally a Christmas present that I got to breed the German Blue Rams. So, I mean, I, I was looking at them, I was thinking, so here, here's what I'm going to do, we'll see how this works, I may totally just be the dumbest thing I've ever done. Uh, with this 33 gallon we'll see but one thing I want to show you guys I'm trying to film here but if you take I, I've got an extra hand if you cut if you take scissors and you take this bag and you cut it and I'll show you what I'm going to do I'm going to hold it here and then I'm, I'm cutting the top off while it's sitting in the water and you just cut that off like this. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I hope you can. I can't really see what you can see. But yeah, you cut it off like that with scissors. I'll set this down. And then, and I, I saw this in a video from a guy over in England that's got a pet store. Then if you just take this and you just roll it up, and uh, what it will do is it will put an air pocket in the plastic. You just roll that up. And I, I think it's just a brilliant idea. Uh, if you've ever dealt with those rubber bands and trying to get that off and how stressful that is for the fish. So then what you can do is you just hang that and let me grab this camera. So now if you look, what I've done is kind of curled and then it's going to float right there. And it won't go below that line. And then, uh, then we'll see how these guys do. But my fear, just so you know, my fear with him in this tank is that um, is that they will eat up all the shrimp. And I don't think they'll eat them all, but if they start really going to town on them, uh, I'm going to have to make some hard decisions. And uh, I, I really like the shrimp. The guppies got to go. So, uh, you know, I may actually try to, you know what? There's two things that have to go. One thing that has to go, just if you guys remember, this right here 
that was not rooted. You know, I wonder if that would root. I'd just be like, get out. No way. It looks like it was going to root because it was still really green. I mean, it did not fade. But I, I just, that's ridiculous to have a sword that big in a 33, so it's not going to happen. Um, another thing that needs to happen while I'm here and you guys can watch what I do. I've got one of these little cleaner pad things, and it's on a stick actually, but it's just easier to do with your hand on a small tank. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here and to get that algae off. And then the other thing that I like to do is just let some of that water and I don't know where all these smells are coming from. Get out. I cannot believe I got all those baby snails on the tank. You just want to smush them. But, uh, what I'm really trying to do here, just so you guys know, is I'm going to see if these rams will coexist. And I'm sorry, I cut in front of the camera. I'm going to see if these rams will coexist with these shrimp. Uh, if they won't, that's going to be a major problem. Uh, JSP, as much as I like your fish, I'm sorry, but it's it's not a German ram. But my heart is really set. I'm just trying to find a way to breed the German rams. I'm just trying to clean this glass. And I just made a complete mess with the, the Rikia. It's kind of stuck in the stuck in there. But uh, now that that's doing, what I want to do, what I like to do, is let the water adjust, and then I just kind of try to mix the water between the two. And uh, you know, there's nothing in here I'm really worried about, uh, if that makes sense. I've got some of that rickia everywhere. But the, I, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Uh, I would love to see them breed in this tank. And I'd, I'd love to see them actually breed like right in here on that, you know, that plant. Put some eggs in there and protect it. That would just be the bomb. But um, I need to clean uh, some of the rickia in here. But, uh, but yeah, that's kind of what I do is I let that I let that bag just kind of float. And you can see there's almost like a little bit of water that's kind of leaking over the top. Some people don't like to mix water. And I'll just let, the, let you guys kind of watch this really quick. And uh, I'll be right back. All right, folks, so, hey, I finally get in a video, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull some of this stuff out. Uh, I just, it's just kind of broken up. Um, and what I want to do, and I'm, I'm probably going to actually uh, take this, plant it's long enough now and big enough I'm going to take it for credit uh, to the local fish store they're having a big sale this weekend so I'll take it then and uh, anyway that's that's the plan um, and I'll, I'll, I'll cut all those runners actually but the that bag's probably adjusted enough right now and then what I just try to do is let the water kind of mix, and, uh, and then hope they like the new tank, so, um, the good thing is that these uh, rams are small enough that they're not going to eat my really big expensive shrimp, but I have no doubt they're going to eat some babies, um, we'll see how it goes. 
So this is kind of what I do. I just kind of, and then I just really try to let them out. And it just depends. It's different for different fish, different tanks. If the tank was bad, I wouldn't have bought any of these. Look at the color. Oh, they're gorgeous. Love these guys. So, um, German Blue Rams are back in the house. Um, can't believe I let the hatchet fish jump out during maintenance. Hopefully it wasn't in the net. I actually checked the video that I posted the other day looking to see when I'm telling you guys, you know, be careful, don't catch a hatchet fish. And I, I didn't see it, but I was just like, man, I cannot believe that I did that. But the, um, that guppy's going in the 120, and if it makes it, it'll be a miracle. Uh, and my apologies to those of you that love fancy guppies. It's just, it's not on my list. So, I got that with the shrimp. Um, but the uh, the rams, let me see if I can give you guys a better picture. I just, I thought they were just gorgeous. Here's this guy right here. Kind of see, just sitting there, just kind of looking. It's kind of hanging out there territorially. Uh, it's kind of, you know, very alert. The fins are moving at a rapid rate, which is a good sign. If I can't change the lighting a little bit for you guys so you can see. There we go, brighten it up. But it, it uh, I don't know, we'll see what happens. So, German Blue Rams in the house. Kind of stoked. Um, the 120, uh, these guys, the Black Angels, Double Black Angels, look like they're nesting again. And I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this tank. Uh, I do have one thing that's going on that's really crazy, and I, I will show you in this video because it's just, it's over the top. So if you look right back here, um, if, if you can see right behind the SAE, there's some dwarf sag, and it runs, it's like right back here, and it runs along this line. But it doesn't try to cross that wood because it's dark under there. But what it does is it runs, it's weird, it runs right back in here. And then it's coming, if you can see it, it's like right over this wood right there. That's some dwarf sag and it's right along this line. And I, I can't honestly get, without just, you know, drop it in the water and showing you, I can't really. But it's back there. But here's what's funny. What's going on is it has actually shot runners along this line right here under the wood into that banana plant. And then look, that is a dwarf sag right there. And I'm just like, how in the world? And it started from like, if you guys remember a few months ago, I put some dwarf sag right in this spot because it was a bare spot right there. And I was just trying to fill it. And matter of fact, let me hit both the, the highlights and I'll show you guys really quick. I'm gonna, there we go. And then I'll, you know what? I'll turn off the 33. And you guys can not get the glare. But it's right there. So the dwarf sag is right here in the back. Uh, you see those black skirts and there's a, there's a glass catfish right there. But it is... Uh, running right under there along that wood you can see it on the other side of that nano Anubius but I guess because of this plank piece it's outside of that because there's shadow so it's just stand to the light but then it just freaking goes under that piece of driftwood there's a piece right there you can see it there's, and then pops up right there craziest thing ever anyway I don't mean to post such a long video, but uh, pretty uh, pretty pumped. Pet Smart, doing it right. You might want to check it out. Final comment, uh, I had my lights on late the other day, and I'm, I'm noticing green algae a lot in the glass. Uh, and so that was the reason I went and got Prime. I'm going to do another water change. You really want your water crystal clear. If it's not clear, you run into a danger of green algae with highlights. 
or an algae bloom. So, and the only way to prevent that, in my opinion, uh, do the water changes, uh, keep out the excess nutrients, don't overfeed, and uh, cut back on the light. So, but anyway, hey, I appreciate everybody watching, and I'm stoked about the German Blue Rams, and uh, we'll see what happens. But happy Tuesday. Sorry it's such a long video, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Later.